Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Laura. So, you guys have been working so hard. I'm so pleased. I want to start off by just congratulating a few people. Um, the as far as uh, the exams and being done with the exams and quizzes, Dorcel Bernard has completed all of hers. Marissa, Shaquille, Chelsea, Abby and Diane. So congratulations on all of you for finishing all of your exams and quizzes. Um, as far as dictations go, some of you are just blowing it out of the water. And um, that is, as far as having the most dictations done, that is in this order, Trisha, Dorcel, Michaela, and Elon, Leslie Ann, and Shaquille. So great, great job there. And as far as uh, highest accuracy in dictations, Trisha, um, Michaela, Dorcel, and Elon. So congratulations on that hard work that you've been doing. It is most certainly appreciated and noticed. Keep up the good work. Um, please know that um, there are sometimes things that there are personal things that can get in your way um, of doing your work and that we all have to deal with personal issues. But if you have a serious health crisis that does not allow you to do the work, please do let me know. Okay. Um, there is no need for you to stress when you are not capable of doing the work. And you are not capable of doing the work when you cannot breathe. <laughs> you, you just can't do the work when you cannot breathe. So please um, just keep me informed, you guys. You know, when there is a crisis, uh, you know, last year I had someone whose uh, parent was in the hospital. And I totally get that. I totally get that there are some things that are definitely more important than school. Okay? So just keep me informed if you're having a hard time, and I will always work with you. And your school, gratefully, um, gives me that leeway when it's needed. Okay? Okay, so... Today, we're going to talk about indexing. I am not certain if when you are indexing, uh, it, when you are transcribing, if you will have to do indexes for every job, it's unlikely. But there will be jobs that you need to make an index for. Making an index is a lot easier with transcriptionists. And I don't know if you've read up on the indexing feature. It's, it's item number 10 under transcriptionist. You'll be reading over that in the next few days. So what I'd like is to just show you how it works. So what I've done is I've prepared um, a text file that requires indexing. And so I have assigned the style to be the TNT criminal matter high court style because I have uh, an index created for that. So I'm going to highlight the job and I'm going to go into edit. Now, I don't have any audio attached to this job. That's why you don't see the audio control panel over here on the left. This is literally just uh, a text file um, that I prepared so that I could show you how to index. So the first thing I wanna show you is that if you click on index, um, 
you'll see page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight, and page nine. These pages are virtual, meaning they are not real. You can't touch them, but you can see them and you can edit them. And what we do is we assign an index list to each of these. Not everybody needs nine indexes, nine index lists. Uh, in fact, for this particular one that uh, I've created, this particular one has witnesses as index one, examinations as index two, cross-examinations as index three, and court exhibits as index four, defense exhibits as index five, and miscellaneous as index six. Now, it's supposed to show the names of those indexes right here, but it's not showing it, so that's a bug in the program, and I'm gonna let the programmer know that so he can fix it for us all. Um, but you will see once he fixes it, the name of the index, which is really very helpful while you're doing your indexing. So while you're doing your edit, you can even do this while you're doing correction. As you're going through your document, if you come to an index, um, I mean an exhibit, that's always something that needs to be added to an index. So what I'm going to do is instead of searching for the word exhibit, I'm going to let uh, transcriptions do the work. I'm going to do control F that brings up the find and replace. And I'm going to type in exhibit and I'm going to click on find next. And the first word that comes up is in reference to this question. Can you open that? to the first exhibit there. So there, the guy is just asking the, the person that's being deposed to go to that exhibit. He's not making reference to it quite yet. So I'm gonna go back to Control F and find next. And here, now here we're referencing exhibit two and he's having him examine the document. So I'm gonna highlight this and um, I'm gonna do Alt. Let's see if it's an exhibit. We're going to the exhibits were, if it's a court exhibit, it's index four. So I'm going to assume it's a court exhibit, so I'm going to do Alt-4. And one of the things I want to show you, for some reason my status bar is not showing here. There we go. So when you actually add something to an, ex to an exhibit list, You're going to highlight it. This one is a plaintiff's exhibit, so that's the court exhibit. So I'm going to do Alt 4. If you do Index 4, you see it says Index Plaintiff's Exhibit number 4, found on page 9, was added to Index page 4. So it's Alt I in the number, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna do Control F again, and I'm gonna to go to Exhibit, Find Next, and here is Exhibit number 30. So again, I'm gonna highlight it.
and do Alt I four. And it says exhibit number 37 found on page 33 was added to index page four. Control F, exhibit, find next. Find next. Okay, highlight exhibit number 22. Now also, if it says what the exhibit is, you can highlight more than just a few words because normally you will have to say what the exhibit is. You can highlight more or less. Alt I four. And then if you click on index, show index page, scroll down to show index page four. Okay, I slid down to index page one, and now if I hit the number four, it'll go to that page. And you'll see that it says plaintiff's exhibit number four, it's on page nine. Exhibit number 30, it's on page 33. Plaintiff's exhibit number 22 on page 50. Now, you can easily come in here and edit it. So if you want to say, um, the book um, and this might be the letter this might be the gun you can always edit it and add to it apply and okay to exit out of it when you're done with adding your indexes and you're ready to bring in your cover pages, when you do job and finalize, it'll bring in your cover pages. And had I had the new job screen filled out, it would have brought in more information, but I didn't fill those out first. But I'm gonna go all the way to the top I'm going to do control home to get there quickly and scroll down. Okay, so here, here's our index. It's in the job, but to actually merge the fields that I have highlighted and that virtual index I've created to merge it with this, I would actually go to index create indexes. Are you sure you want to create indexes? Yes. And it's going to blink and flash. It's going through the document, making sure that all of the page numbers have not changed so that it can update them. Because when you add your cover pages, the page number will change. This is a really um, long document, I think, which is why it's taking a while to go through it.
I want to uh, draw your attention to the the actual book in the course on creating the index and show you on the right hand side there's an image of the index drop down where the actual indexes are labeled as they're supposed to be and where that happens is in the style and I'm going to show you that in just a minute when the index is done. Now, every index that you have can be different. They don't always have to be the same. And you can create the index and add an index on its own, or you can add an index to the style cover pages. The exercise in the book on the transcriptionist course actually shows you how to create an index include file, walks you through every step of the process. It shows you what it should look like and how to make it look like that. because indexes are not all created equal. There are some indexes that are very, very short, just having the name of the witness. And when examination goes from direct to cross to redirect to recross, whereas others um, can be extremely complex. So in the style on the index page is where we get to write what we want our index to be called. And that has to correlate to the actual index page that we create. And so if it's list number one, you assign it to witnesses on behalf of the plaintiff. And then over here, witnesses on behalf of the plaintiff and your index one marker looks like this, which is the asterisk index, open parentheses, the number of the list, close parentheses, asterisk. That's the way it looks in its rough form before it's replaced. Okay, finally it's replaced. So, as you can see, all that I added were these three exhibits. 
and they're listed here. I noticed that they are listed in ascending order. Descending order, actually. We want it in ascending order. If you do not have an index for that particular job, and when you bring the cover pages in, there is still an index, it's perfectly fine to delete, to highlight and delete the index if you don't have an index for that job. That's completely fine to do. This makes creating indexes a lot easier than having to keep a note on a piece of paper. And anytime you want to update the page numbers, you can go to index, refresh indexes. Are you sure you want to refresh indexes now? You say yes. And it actually goes through and checks to make sure that everything that you indexed is still on the same page. And if it's not, it updates those page numbers for you, which is a lot easier than you having to go look for the page and update it yourself. So that's indexing. As you can see, it is not a very complex task at all. Pretty simple to get done. Let's see what else you will be exploring in this next week. You'll be uh, learning your basic Windows hotkeys, which most of you probably already know. Your basic Control A to select all. Control C to copy. Control V as in Victor to paste. Control Z as in Z to undo. Those are your basic um, hotkeys that you're going to be learning in Windows, though there are many, many others. Some of the other things that you'll be learning in the, um, you'll learn about the Windows taskbar, which is this down here below. You'll learn how you can customize the taskbar. You can make it disappear and reappear. I don't like that. I like my status bar to be static, always there. Um, you'll learn a little bit about antivirus software. One of the things about antivirus software is um, antivirus software is a very good thing. Windows comes with uh, Windows Defender, which we encourage you to leave on at all times. Windows Defender is not going to keep us from dialing into your computer. Um, it's not going to do anything that will keep you from accomplishing your work. So I say always leave Windows Defender on. Um, there will be times when some people will add another antivirus program with a firewall, that can sometimes keep us from dialing in. So if you do add another antivirus software, be sure you know how to disable it. Okay, miscellaneous dragon and accuracy tuning. Okay, I'm gonna close out of these things and I'm going to just go into dragon alone just to talk to you for a minute about accuracy tuning. So I'm gonna go into Dragon by itself. Remember, you're supposed to go into Dragon by itself once a week, just to open it up and make sure that it doesn't need to run user profile maintenance. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. You always want to let, wait until the user completely loads to actually start doing anything in Dragon. I'm sure you figured that out by now. Um, okay. Okay, so 
if I do launch accuracy tuning, it may tell me that there is no new data in the acoustic archive. Acoustic optimizer does not need to be rerun at this time. Now, what it will do is say, oh, do you want to perform the language model optimizer? And it says that approximate runtime is one minute. That doesn't sound too long. So I'm going to click on start and I'm going to see, uh, it can't be run at this time because there's not enough dictation data available. Does this mean I'm not dictated enough? No. What it means is that I haven't dictated more since the last time I ran the acoustic language model uh, or the, the language model optimizer or the accuracy tuning wizard. And so just know that it's, it's, it doesn't always have to be done. Okay, in the Dragon Options, if you go into the Data tab, you'll see an option that is Run Accuracy Tuning at the time scheduled by your administrator. Um, you can go to Advanced and check Create the Usability Log if you'd like. That tells us a little bit more about what you have done so that if there's a problem, we can solve it. And if you have the check on run acoustic tuning, um, then it is going to run that acoustic language optimizer every once in a while when it's possible to run it, when it has enough data. So now I'm going to exit Dragon. And I'll go back into Transcriptionist. Okay. I've covered just about everything that you have coming in the next week. It, it's a light week where study is concerned. It'll give you a chance to catch up on your dictations. So what I'd like to do now is really talk um, more than anything else about dictations and about your, um, your dictation and your accuracy and the things that you have to pay attention to. Um, as you are getting faster in speed, and, and that's happening right now, you're getting up into much faster speeds. And you're going to see that it actually takes a little bit more effort to get that higher accuracy as the speed rises. Now, some people get more comfortable with faster speeds. Others have more of a struggle. I didn't start to struggle until about 180 uh, as far as being clear in my dictation but I did start to struggle with my breathing about at 160. So at about the 150, 160 range, you are gonna start seeing that you have to take a nice, deep, deep breath and um, make that breath last as long as possible.
one of the things that you went through in um, your Moodle class on Dragon, no, it would have been in computer skills, you went through a section called Breathing Matters. And that is what you want to reference when you're talking about how to handle breathing as you get into the higher speeds. I find that it's important to take a nice, deep, fresh breath. We talked about this in the beginning. Um, we talked about how important it is to take a deep, clean breath instead of taking the breath inside your mask, um, but using the tilt method to allow yourself to get nice, fresh air. And you definitely want to do that so that you're not breathing in carbon monoxide because that'll get you to sleep faster than one of my lectures. So you really want to pay attention to that. And let's see, where is breathing matter? Oh, you think breathing was in transcriptionist. Okay. Here we go. You should have all done this breathing audio part one and audio part two. One of the first things that you need to learn is how to breathe properly inside a mask so the dragon has a better opportunity to understand what you are saying. In order to breathe properly, your posture is of utmost importance. To learn proper breathing requires learning a new skill. Ready? Put your feet flat on the floor. Okay, Let's put your feet flat back. on the floor. Lift your shoulders, roll them back slightly, lower them, become comfortable. Slightly elevate your chin. This helps open your palate for a clearer sound. You're going to be breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. You want to make sure that you do not have breath sounds inside the confined space of your mask. In order to achieve that, you have to practice. This is a skill, just like the other skills you will learn in voice writing. Ready? Breathe through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth. Place your hands on your abdomen. I want to make sure that you are cognizant of the fact that you are breathing from your diaphragm and not from the upper part of your chest. When you breathe in, your hands will slightly expand outward. When you exhale, they will slightly contract inward. Ready? 
in through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth. Keep going. Inhale through your nose to the count of two. Exhale to the count of four. Inhale to the count of two. Exhale to the count of four. Pay attention to your hands and pay attention to your breathing. Do not inhale with your mouth open. Okay. And remember this is in the course. So you can listen to this as much as possible. Now we're gonna to listen to breathing audio part two. Try to do what she says as you're listening. I'm going to use two little phrases to help you learn to speak while breathing properly. These are the phrases that all the way through Dragon 14, we had to utilize every single time we did general training. So to begin, we're going to start in a conversational voice and then I'm going to get you to lower your voice so that you can arrive at your reporter's voice, which is that very, very soft-spoken, never whispered, only soft-spoken voice. The one that you would use if you would be standing over a crib with a sleeping baby so as to not awaken that child. In through your nose, out through your mouth, I'm going to say the phrase twice, and then I'm going to invite you to join me. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Join me. Welcome, Welcome to, to general, general training. training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Softer. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Softer. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Reporter's voice. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. A little faster. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. Welcome to general training. Training is about to begin. All right, stop there. Now, you obviously can't do this breathing exercise in a courtroom, or even at the beginning of a deposition, not out loud the way that we have just done it. But what you can do is sit there for just a moment, take a couple of those cleansing breaths in and out. This exercise becomes an on switch, if you will, which mentally prepares you to go to work. Okay. This is really, really great advice. And it really does help. I would encourage you to listen to this audio, both of them, right before you start dictating, especially 
if you're having a problem with your breathing or if you're having a problem with um, your speed because it gets you in that correct mode. And so I just wanted to stress that because it's really, really important as you get going faster that you remember that breathing is crucial to uh, most life on the planet. And so while you're doing your job, you do still need to be breathing and you need to make that, that breath last as long as possible while you're dictating and try practicing that try being conscious of how much you can say in one breath without getting to the end of the breath where there's no audio behind the breath because when there's no audio behind your breath obviously dragon is not going to write anything for you so those are the things I really wanted to cover. So we have some time left. Does anybody have any questions at all about anything at all so far? I'm sorry, you guys. I tried to unmute you all, but um, it appears that when I unmute you all, it's causing feedback. So, if you'd like to ask a question, please unmute yourself and then ask me a question. <laughs> Are there any additional work to be done other than the 67 dictations that were previously assigned? No. Um, as a matter of fact, we have, <clears throat> Michelle has, in the process of these last few weeks, as we have had some of you report, <coughs> <coughs> problems with certain dictations she has removed the requirement on those dictations for 80% accuracy, meaning you should still do um, the dictation so that you have a number there. Uh, it will act as extra points. And so far, that is the hearing the National Endowment for the Humanities Initiative Oh, you're not hearing me. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Testing one, two, three. Test, test. Okay, thank you, Leslie. Okay, so um, the ones that have been, the 80% has been removed is um, the National Endowments for the Humanities Initiative, part three. Uh, that's at 155 words per minute. And then at 185, Microbial Ecology Part 4, that has also been, um, the 80% the has been removed. So any number that you get there, <coughs> will be added as extra points. <coughs> there will not be a requirement on those two. Um, I think as far as hearing national endowments for the humanities, one, two, three, four, five, six, six of you have not done it and that's fine. You don't have to because it's only for extra points now, but, um, since everybody else has, keep in mind that the grades work on a curve. 
So everyone else will have those extra points. So you should try to have something there, though it is not required. Adria, I, can I just break in and say something? Um, when, when it started out, there's another one, there's three, the hearing and fraud and hearing abuse or fraud and abuse hearing at 135. But what some of the users have done is they've done gone to the additional dictations and they've done a dictation at the same or higher speed. It has to be like 135 or higher or 155 or higher, you know, and just within like five to 10 points, 185 or higher, they've done a different dictation. And those points have gone, for some people, those points have gone into those scores because we told them they could do a dictation at the same or higher speed and use that as the points, for the points. For the yes. Points. yes. Now, keep in mind though, if you're gonna do that, you have got to add that dictation to your worksheet so that when you turn it in to me at the end of the course, that is represented on your dictations page. Okay? So as long as you do that, it's all good. And I will accept it. And if you find ever, um, many of you have done this and I very much appreciate you. Um, if you are having real problems with the dictation that is keeping you from moving ahead, please alert us via the Skype um, thread because Michelle has been Johnny on the spot with going and actually getting, um, getting you past those things when you can't she's she's removed the requirement as needed and we're fine with allowing you to pick something else at that speed so do not let one dictation that you cannot get through hold you up if you've done it six and seven and eight and nine times and you cannot get 80 percent or better i think it's time to tell michelle or, or i you know it's time to say I can't get past this. I'm having a heck of a time. You know, um, there are times that some of them are going to be much rougher than others. Let us know. You know, do give it a, a go. You know, if you do it once and you can't get past it, we're not going to excuse you from that at that point. But if you do it six times and you still can't get past it, we will excuse you at that point. Okay? Any other questions? Okay, well, this will be a short class then today. I will try to get this video done today and get the other video, video finished today. I had a lot of problems with the audio on the other video. And so I'm having to pull in the audio alone and mess with it because there's warbling and there's places you can't hear me. So uh, do you, this is a good question. Do we lose marks for no punctuation? You do not lose marks from me for no punctuation. I think that, um, I think that you can lose marks for punctuation in real time coach. Michelle, what do you say about that? No, you don't lose marks for punctuation in real time coach. I've never seen it affect um, my grade because I tend to punctuate in the wrong place. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I tend to punctuate too much and it doesn't take off for it. That's great. Um, I use punctuation when you, you think it does, Shaquille. I tell you what, I will contact Real Time Coach and I'll ask them to be certain. Um, I know that I try to throw in commas and periods. Every once in a while, I'll hear a need for a, a semicolon and I'll do it. On days when I'm really on my game, I can punctuate. On days when I'm having a hard time breathing, I'm, I'm lucky just to get the words, so punctuation is 
hard to do, but we will find out for sure with them and we'll, we'll answer you in the Skype thread so that all of you know right away. Uh, yes, Laura, I, I feel as though I get higher marks when I dictate punctuation as well. And part of that, uh, I see Shaquille, good point there too. Part of getting better marks when you dictate punctuation is that Dragon actually does better with context analysis when you punctuate. So you're telling Dragon, okay, well consider that a sentence and make it make sense. That's what you're saying when you add punctuation. And um, yes, it contributes within the drop words area. I've realized that if you don't punctuate, you get more drop words. That's, that's very, um, that's a very good realization as Michelle says. So I will still ask real time coach and make sure. And I'll also examine the site where uh, they have tutorials, to see if it, it tells us one way or another. Sometimes I think that if I punctuate, I need to punctuate all the way through. If I don't punctuate, then I need to not punctuate all the way through. But I don't know if it truly makes a difference either way, but we will find out for you. Anything else? Okay, as always, you're doing a great job. I'm really proud of you. Thank you for asking questions in the Skype forum. That's what it's for. We are here for you, please remember that. Thank you for letting us know when you have issues. We appreciate that so we can help you. Uh, that is the whole point. And you all have a wonderful day. Okay, thank you, Michelle, for that. Y'all have a great day. See you next week. Talk to you before then, though. Bye, everybody.